desire, aversion, um, as mentioned, gratitude, um, any number of states or whatever you want to call them, emotions even, are uh, functions of desire, just different permutations, different vintages of the same wine. Um, a lot of people have trouble with this idea of desire in and of itself versus individual desires. Um, it's uh, I think that it, it what we're dealing with is simply different ways of seeing reality. Um, some people's minds just don't seem to be put together in such a way as to see the universe in a different way from their own, myself included here, by the way. I'm as biased as anybody else is. Um, <clears throat> and one of the interesting things that I sort of noticed is that um, nobody seems to notice that desire is an active thing. Um, even aversion is an active thing. Suffering, one could say, is an active thing because unless you were pushing it away from yourself, in other words, or so to speak, or whatever, unless suffering is, is something that you deliberately want to avoid, want to act in such a way as to prevent from happening, if you don't want to stop it, then it's not suffering. If I go down to one of these places downtown and pay somebody $200 to beat me and humiliate me and step on my belly with her stiletto heels or something like this, okay, a lot of people would consider that suffering, but a lot of people seek that out. <laughs> if, uh, if it's not an active thing, then it's not suffering. <laughs> Uh, if you're not averse to it, then it isn't suffering. Um, same thing with any desire. If it's not active, then it isn't desire. People ca can't seem to sort of approach this this way, this whole issue this way. They say, your desires were, and again, um, Artificer mentioned Occam's Razor, and I said, yeah, that's all, that's all very well, but Occam's Razor can be used evasively <laughs> as well to avoid facing something. Um, they're saying that, okay, maybe we can only define it by its absence. Now, I, I'm all for that. I'm all for ideas that you can only define by their absence, um, by what they're not. But the, that, the problem with desire is it, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, desire abstracts possibilities. Desire abstracts <laughs> desires. Desire uh, abstracts different scenarios that do not phenomenally exist. Um, artificial intelligence was mentioned as well by Artificer, and I sort of say, well, we can observe what these things do, but we don't know whether or not they're conscious. We don't know whether or not they have desires. Um, it, you know, I, I've often said that if if we did invent artificial intelligence, how would we know if we'd succeeded? <laughs> we don't have any way of testing for the presence of intelligence. We have ways of making what we believe to be educated guesses, but that's about it. Um, well, if you want to make educated guesses, that's fine by me. But you better remember what you're doing, and better put some quotation marks around that educated bit, because when you're making guesses of that nature, Hmm. <laughs> Occam's razor, for example, can be shown to prove the existence of God in certain ways. And that's why a lot of, at this, <laughs> at this level of abstraction of discussion, a lot of people, myself included, are pointing at other people and saying, you're talking about God, you're talking about faith. <laughs> now people are doing it to me. There you go. <laughs> um, but it is an interesting thing, isn't it? Eh? These the whole idea of desire. Um, as I say, Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, and a lot of the Eastern philosophies put desire at the absolute center of everything. <laughs> uh, 
uh, they say desire essentially creates the universe. Um, now, what that means is a different story. <laughs> um, what does it mean to create the universe? To create the universe as we perceive it is the way I interpret that. And that's how I interpret it, say, to, in the Schopenhauerian and Nietzschean sense with the will. Uh, the will is another interesting thing that is fascinating when you compare it or sort of try and align it with a deterministic view of the universe. The will and desire are similar things, I would say. Um, in some contexts, I guess they would be identical, but um, not necessarily. Um, but it is an interesting thing is in, in that the will is an active thing. And if there's no... Uh, if it's not active, then it isn't the will. <laughs> it's the same thing as desire. They said, no, no, your desires are caused by... No, 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 no. You keep jumping back to that. I'm not saying what desires are caused by. And not only that, saying that your desires are... We know what desire is caused by is kind of another profession of faith. But... Um, even if it were, you're simply sidestepping the question of the fundamental nature of desire. <laughs> um, what is it? Never mind what causes it. You see how rutted one's thinking becomes over time. Uh, you start, you know, again, one could argue that this is scientism creeping into our thinking. It's one of the many reasons why I refuse to wear the title atheist. Um, it's far too constricting. Um, if something exists, if something is to be a viable concept, it has to have attributes. It has to have more than it, it was caused by as a way of defining it. Um, and again, if you, uh, question that, if you question the fundamental nature of these things, then you're going to have to throw everything into that same sort of, I don't know, skeptical pot and say, I question all of this stuff. You're going to have to question experience. You're going to have to question suffering. You're going to have to question joy. You're going to have to question will. You're going to have to question all of that. Um, which is fine, too. Um, as uh, was mentioned uh, by my name, you keep on that line of reasoning and you have abolished the universe. It just doesn't exist anymore. It seems to exist, though. 